Welcome to Engineering Studio with Dr. Mohammad Tahir. From this video, we are going to start a new topic related to seismic analysis of structures using equivalent lateral force procedure. In this chapter, we will learn about the seismic analysis of building using simplified equivalent lateral force, lateral force procedure given by ASCE. So the focus is to understand the different ASCE coefficients. ASCE seismic coefficients used for the seismic analysis of structures so that these can be implemented in the analysis and design softwares like ETABS. So our focus is to learn the seismic coefficients which are used for, the def for defining the seismic loads in ETABS. So the content to be covered in this chapter are introduction to earthquake and earthquake loads, equivalent lateral force procedure, effective seismic weight, approximate fundamental time period, seismic base shear coefficient, calculation of base shear lateral force over turning moment and drift etc. Then summary of equivalent lateral force procedure and the end we will solve one example, analysis example manually and at the end we can also, we will also implement this procedure in the E tab to solve the or to analyze the structures. So these topics will be covered in 7 to 8 videos. In this video, we are going to discuss about the introduction to earthquake and earthquake loads. So what is an earthquake? So an earthquake is the shaking of surface of the earth due to sudden release of energy in the earth crust. So in the earth crust, we have the tectonic plates when they move toward each other or apart each other. So they there will be some energy concentration at the junction. So when these plates move apart each other or toward each other, so a sudden release of energy will happen over here and as a result seismic waves will generate and these waves will propagate in all the direction causing the shaking of the earth surface. So the causes of the earthquake are, earthquake are caused by the sudden tectonic movement in the earth crust, when the tectonic plates slide over one another, it causes earthquake and volcanoes. So the disturbance caused, this disturbance caused vibrations that spread in all direction. And these vibrations are actually seismic waves which are responsible for the shaking of earth surface and the structures above the earth surface. So what are the effect of earthquake? So the first effect is ground shaking. So these seismic waves, when they travel in the earth crust, so they will shake the ground surface. And as a result, the buildings above it will also be shaking. And the intensity of shaking depends on the duration, duration of these waves, for how long these waves continue to move, and the geology of the area, and the distance from the epicenter, or the source of the earthquake. So earthquake also damage the man-made structure. So when these structure will be vibrated, so they can be damaged. Either they can be cracked, they can be overturned, or they can be collapsed. An outbreak of fire or spilling of chemicals can also happen. So when the earthquake will, when the earthquake event will happen, so in that case the ground will shake, and if the gas pipeline or some chemical pipeline is there so it can be disturbed so it can be damaged so as a result the gas or the chemical can be leaked and it can also cause fire in the buildings or at the areas where the gas is leaking okay now what is what are the earthquake loads so if we see when the earthquake will earthquake event will happen, so seismic waves will generate, so they will try to move the earth surface along with that, because the seismic waves travel in the form of compression and rearfection. So when the rearfection will happen, so it means the building or the soil will try to move in this direction. So when the ground will move in this direction, so the building above it will also move along with the soil or along with the ground. So the base of the structure will move with the ground but the upper portion of the earth uh, but the upper portion of the structure will be reluctant to move 
with the ground this is because of the inertia the inertia of the structure will try to prevent the movement of the structure so as a result the structure will deform so when the structure will deform so it means there are some stresses which are generated inside this building which have caused the distortion of the building and these stresses are forces internal forces which are responsible for this distortion or which are produced as a result of this distortion are termed as earthquake forces or earthquake load so as the ground moves on which the building rest is displaced the base of the building moves with it so as the ground on which the building rests is displaced the base of the building move with it however the building above the base is reluctant to move with it because of inertia of the building mass because the inertia of the building mass resists motion and cause building to distort so the inertia of the building will prevent its movement and as a result the building will distort hence the earthquake forces are generated which are principally internal forces resulting from the distortion produced by the inertial resistance of the structure to earthquake motions so as we know that stresses are produced as a result of strain so when the strain or distortion is produced in the building so it means the stresses will generate or stresses will be produced in the building and these stresses are internal forces are actually termed as earthquake loads okay if we talk about the earthquake load their magnitude so the magnitude of the inertial forces induced in an earthquake depends on the building mass building stiffness ground acceleration the nature of foundation and the dynamic characteristics of the building like damping so it is not only the function of acceleration ground acceleration i uh, mean the movement of the ground but it also depend on the properties of the building and the nature of the soil if a building and its foundation were infinitely rigid it would have the same acceleration as the ground the inertial forces f for the given ground acceleration a may be calculated by the newton formula so this will be equal to f is equal to ma mass time acceleration so for the for a structure that deform only slightly which has slight deformation thereby absorbing some energy the force f tends to be less than the product mass and ground acceleration so in that case this force the inertial forces will be less than m time a acceleration but in case of tall buildings which are more flexible so in that case the they will experience very lower acceleration so in case of tall building the acceleration of the building will be sufficiently less than the ground acceleration however due to the flexible nature of the building if the time period of the building matches with the time period of the ground waves so in that case resonance will happen and as a result a large magnitude inertial forces will develop in the building and they can cause the collapse of the building so we can summarize over here if the building is a rigid building so in that case case f is equal to ma mean if there is no deformation and the building is moving along with the ground and if the building is semi rigid mean it it can deform somehow so in that case the acceleration of the building will be lesser than the ground acceleration so in that case case inertial forces will be less than ma and in case of high rise building which are more flexible so in that case the acceleration will be less than the acceleration of the building will be less than acceleration of ground but because of their flexible nature if their time period time period of the building matches with the time period of ground so in that case resonance can happen and as a result these forces the inertial forces will be considerably higher than the mass time a mean inertial forces the product of moment time mass time acceleration so thus we can say that the magnitude of lateral force is not the function of acceleration of the ground alone mean it doesn't depend on the acceleration of the ground only but it is influenced to a great extent by the type of response of the structure so based on the type of structure its stiffness the value of these forces will be different as well as the nature of the 
foundation. So this interrelationship of building behavior and seismic ground motion also depend on the building period. So it also depend on the building period which is formulated in the so called response spectrum. So we can say that these seismic forces F are the function of time period of the building, ground acceleration and the stiffness of the building, ground nature, similarly nature of foundation and the dynamic characteristics of the building.